And now, Working Man Radio with your host, Joe Lyles. The concept is imperialism. You may have heard that word, imperialism. You may ask yourself, what is imperialism? What is that? What are we talking about? And actually, in the story of stuff, that the young lady kind of explains what imperialism is. So my country's response to this limitation is simply to go take somebody else's. This is the third world which some would say is another word for our stuff that somehow got on somebody else's land. So what does that look like? The same thing, trashing the place. Now, there is no doubt. I have frequently discussed the need uh, to do what I call an imperialist tour of your house because the the, the fruits of imperialism are all over your house. Um, in fact, you don't even have to go. You can look, go right out and look at your car. Your car, your car engine has stainless steel parts in it. And by the way, no stainless steel, no car engines. No stainless steel, no high-speed machinery. No stainless steel, no jet planes. No helicopters. Right? Stainless steel is an in- extremely important substance because stainless steel is hard and durable and it doesn't corrode and that's why it's in all kind of parts inside of your engine if we were to go take your engine apart you would see stainless steel all over the place you might have to clean the grease and dirt off of it but 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 when you get down to the bottom of it you will find that shiny silvery stuff that doesn't rust and that will support the kind of forces going on inside your car's engine. St- stainless steel is a, is, a, is a critical substance to our advanced industrial society, and the key critical ingredient to stainless steel is chromium, most of which comes from Africa, sub-Saharan Africa specifically, the poorest continent on the planet. All kinds of things come from uh, from uh, 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 Africa. Do you have a cell phone? Your cell phone probably operates on a lithium-ion battery. And if your cell phone operates on a lithium-ion battery, uh, there is a one in three chance that the lithium in it came from Congo, the Congo, formerly known as Zaire. Again, sub-Saharan Africa. The rubber on your car's tires come from comes from either Brazil or Southeast Asia. The oil in your gas tank might have come from the from here at home. It might have, or it might have come from Canada, or it might have come from Venezuela. That's a country in South America, or it might have come from Nigeria. That's the place <coughs> where guys are living out up up the up the river, uh, uh, up up tributaries of the Niger Delta, and uh, and and they're making home brewed gasoline. They're pirating gasoline. They're pirating oil and making home brewed gasoline and transporting it like like moonshiners transporting moonshine, selling it in gallon jugs. And the reason they're doing this is because there there are no jobs. I mean, there are no jobs. There is no employment in Nigeria except the little bit of employment that the oil companies offer. All of these materials are leaving the places where they are found, and they are coming here. How many stainless steel parts are going back to the Africa where that where the chromium came from? How many petrochemical products are going back to Nigeria where the petroleum came from? How many uh, how many tires are going back to Brazil where the rubber came from? How much value is going back to these places? How much is being extracted out and how much is being sent back? And by the, you know, and by the way, then there's the labor. Now Lee Doran explains this. This is such a tired leftist dogma. It's called trade. We give them capital and our new technology, and they provide labor and resources, and both parties are better off than they were before. 
Right. They give labor and resources, which we turn into goods and services, which we sell here in the United States and in Europe and in Japan and increasingly in China and India. But he says that it's called trade, that we are, we are extracting these resources and exploiting this labor in places like Bangladesh, but we're giving them something back. We're giving them capital. Who? Who are we giving capital to? Who's getting this capital? I mean, we, I can show you a factory. I mean, a, a factory in the United States, a working man or you know, a coal mine. Let's, we can talk about West Virginia. Coal miner goes into the coal mine, works a day, and gets paid. Uh, back in the old days, you had worked for the company store. Uh, you know, you lived on the place, and you had, to, you had to go to the company store. So as the song went, another day older and deeper in debt. Every day you worked, you wound up owing the company money. It was a, basically a way of enslaving people, and it took, it was a, took, it took violent re- rebellion to put an end to it. It took the New Deal to put an end to it. It took the National Labor Relations Act and the right of coal miners to organize and unionize. That's what put an end to that crap. Well, how much, what, 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 what was this capital co- going into West Virginia? We can look at West Virginia, right here in America. What was the capital going to? It was not going into the pockets of the people doing the work. That's what Doran isn't explaining to you. The capital going to Nigeria is not going into the pockets of the people who live there, work there, live on top of these oil fields. There is a model for the extraction of resources that benefits the people who live who, whose resources they f- can may fairly be said to own them there is a place a government who owns the resources leases them out basically sells them to the oil companies and it, and the oil companies pay a, 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 and they pay a large amount of money which is then distributed to the people who live uh, uh, under that government. Yes, that's right. They have nationalized the resources, and they pay everybody in that country gets a cut. They get a check every month for their cut of the sale of oil that they live on top of. What do you say, Doran? Is that communism? Socialism? Unnatural interference? Because, you know, the people in Nigeria are getting so rich with all that oil in their country being sold every year. They're getting so rich with all that country in Rhodesia. Or, pardon me, uh, it was Rhodesia. Zimbabwe. What place am I talking about? It's called Alaska. It's part of the United States. It works pretty good called socialism yeah like they practice in alaska where the people get a check every month for their oil wealth and vote republican what do you think lee you like it thanks for watching and don't forget to like subscribe and comment you've been listening to working man radio with joe lyle at joe